So where we're at now is I have sanded up the exposed sections of frame two. So sanded this here, sanded the tops where my floor planks are. Same over here with this one, it's all sanded up. You can see my tape line. Um, because this was all still really rough and bumpy from its you know coats of epoxy. I never did sand prep them or any of that. Um, I just basically coated inside of the hull with two coats and left it at that. So the areas, you can see the bumps over here. This will all of course be hidden up here. But this is exposed and you'll see it. And this is exposed and you'll see it. So I wanted to get them nice and smooth before I varnish all of this stuff. So they're sanded. Um, the top of this frame, although I think the seat hides it, I went ahead and sanded it and I'm gonna varnish it as well. Uh, and then I've sanded back here. Um, all the way around this uh, floor support which is frame two as well as both of the exposed frames up the side and the the ply that you may or may not see so anyhow I sanded all of that stuff down I had to extend my little notch right here nor it used to end right about here and when I had the outboard test fit on and you can see that's off as well when I had the outboard test fit I realized that the cable actually needed to come back into here to be right so I cut this out farther, sanded it all up. Um, all of my holes, I have sanded the edges, the corners nice and smooth so the cables can't, can't get caught, hung up, and, or, or drug on them. All three of those, I did the same over there, smoothed that all up. And I have re-sanded the bottom of my motor well, as you can see, it's not glossy anymore. So what I'm getting ready to do here today is encapsulate all of this stuff in here that needs it all of my holes um, my my extra new cutout all of the frames um, the exposed parts of the frames as well as my cable hole down here in the armrest I'm getting ready to do the final epoxy inside here so that I am just down to nothing but varnishing inside the boat and that's where we're at that's what I'm doing today so we now have the smoothing epoxy coat on frame four, all the way across in the floor support, up that frame, we've got the top of this coated. Uh, we'll come over here, frame two, floor supports all the way across, and then a little exposed frame on both sides. That's coated. Uh, all of our holes are coated in the motor well. The uh, steer cable hole and the steer clearance hole. Uh, you can see the second coat inside the motor well. It looks pretty darn good. Uh, we also coated this extended cutout for the cable to go through. And I forgot to mention, and it's coated now, the motor well cutout. Um, one thing I did on this motor well cutout was the stainless, it looked really good, it fit pretty good. But these, these tops, the top surface, wasn't 100% 90 degrees to the transom. So what that resulted in was that stainless bending like this a little bit over here and then like this a little bit on this side. So it kind of put the whole thing in a twist. Um, so what I did was prior to obviously epoxying all of this stuff, I took a, a uh, square and put on on the back side and looked for the gap on which side it was at, marked it all, came back and sanded it. Now this surface was dead on. It was just a little bit off on this curve and a little bit off on this curve. So I got all those sanded flush so it's perfectly 90 to the inside and outside face of the transom. And then I refit that stainless on there. So it's a better fit. And I, again, this is one thing that wasn't coated in epoxy and it needed to be. So got that done. So all of the, I believe, all of the interior epoxy coats are done. Um, one of the last things I needed to coat was the bracket for the shift linkage. And this is the steer rod clear hole on the port side of the motor well. So I got that encapsulated as well. But I think, I think we're ready to start varnishing. Making good progress. So we now have all of the forward floor planks sanded, uh, top and all the way around with 220 and a block. And there's, there's my block right there with some 220 wrapped around it. You can see where I've been sanding. Obviously, the dust is everywhere. It's all over my pants. I've got about uh, five hours in sanding these, and I sanded them by hand, 100% uh, by hand, because 
I was really afraid with a random orbital I may burn through the corners and I didn't want to do that. So it's all hand sanded. But I just finished up. I wiped, uh, took them all down. I, I dusted the table off with my brush, uh, put down new wax paper, and then wiped them all down. Brushed them all off first to get the loose stuff and then wiped them all down with alcohol and a rag. So I'm going to let these sit overnight and make sure that all the alcohol is completely evaporated. And tomorrow after work, I'll come and one by one tack rag each piece down and start on the first coat of varnish. So I'm pretty excited to see how it's going to turn out. They're pretty darn smooth. Well, we just put on the very first coat of Captain's uh, varnish. And uh, it's, st it's still wet, but uh, it really turned out nice. It's a very high gloss. I'm trying to get... You can see the, the shine on each one of these. Anyhow, very, very high gloss. Looks really nice. Of course, we'll have to sand this down and uh, coat it all over again. Two more coats, then we'll move on to the next section of the floor planks. So, making good progress. Look pretty good. And this stuff applies just like the bottom paint. Maybe it's a little thinner than the bottom paint. Uh, it's a lot easier to work than the epoxy for like encapsulating. Again, this is the very first time I've ever varnished anything. And uh, I rolled it on with a brush or with a roller and then tipped the bubbles out with a brush and the stuff, you know, when you run the brush across the top, it leaves like little streaks, but it flows out like flat as glass within just a couple of minutes. So it looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty proud of it. So here's a look at the, uh, the gloss on the planks. You can see stuff reflecting off the wall up there in them. They're not flawless, but I'm, I'm pretty impressed for my first attempt ever. There we are. Well, here is the second coat. I sanded them up in between the first and second coat with 220 and then uh, any spots that were glossy I knocked down with a red very fine scotch bright pad and you can see the results there they're like glass they're like mirrors really shiny so uh, anyhow we'll let this cure up one final sand one final coat and they're done move on to the next section of planks making good progress and here's the third and final coat of the varnish on the front half of the floor planks. Um, this sat all day today. Uh, they're completely cured now, but I'm going to let them set overnight again. Uh, tomorrow I'll take all of these, get them out of the way, and get the rear floor planks set up here. Uh, you can see you can see the gloss on them. They're like mirrors. Every single one of the floor planks look like that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. I did do something a little different in preparation for the final coat on these. Um, between uh, the epoxy and the first coat, I sanded with 220. Between the first coat and second coat, I sanded with 220. But between the second and final third coat, I actually sanded everything with 400. And then on the first two coats, I used a foam brush to tip the bubbles out. On the last coat, I used my semi-high dollar um, synthetic bristled brush to tip the bubbles out after I rolled the uh, varnish on. And I don't know if it was a combination of the synthetic brush bristles leaving finer lines and it flowed out easier. I don't know if it was using the 400 that worked better or, or gave it a better finish. But whatever the case, I like that method. I'm going to continue with it. Uh, when I do the rear half of the planks, I'm going to sand them with 220, sand the bare epoxy with 220, coat it, sand it with 220 again, coat it, and then I'll sand it with 400 um, and, and use the bristle brush on the final coat. I just think, I mean, the results speak for themselves. It's like a mirror. And again, this, stu this stuff isn't, it's not wet. This is dry, completely dry. That's, that's how it looks. But I am, I'm thoroughly impressed and happy with the results you can see the gloss on on all those back there it's like a mirror really really pretty this captain's varnish is is fantastic and i'll, I'll show a shot of the can of varnish um, it's made by pettit 
and it was expensive. I mean, this stuff's $46 a quart, almost $200 a gallon. Um, but a quart, it would appear, is going to be enough to do all of my floor planks and most, if not all, of the interior um, armrest, dash, carlings, you know, that kind of stuff, the tops of the frames, the exposed sections of frames. I think a quart will do three, three coats on all of my flooring and all this interior. If not, it'll be very, very close. But uh, the reason I picked this Captain's uh, by Pettit was because it had really, really great reviews. Um, right on the can, it says safe for application directly onto uh, bare epoxy which is fantastic. That's what I needed it for. And not all varnishes are epoxy compatible, but this Captain's is. Um, and lots of people that had reviewed it, and again, I read reviews on almost everything I buy now. Um, lots of people that had reviewed the Captain's varnish had talked about having fantastic results with the, the roll and tip method, which is how I wanted to apply it, and I'm really glad I did. I mean, look at them. So pretty. So, more sanding, more varnish, more sanding, more varnish. The saga continues. So here's a look at the second coat on the rear half of the floor planks. And uh, you can see the gloss on it. Turning out pretty good. So, uh, all that's left is to let these fully cure one more I guess I'll let them cure uh, tomorrow and then do one final sanding with 400 and one final coat and I'm done with the floorboards onto the interior well it is June 1st 2017 for the month of May 2017 we went up 45 and a quarter hours that is by far my best hours in a single month record record hours so anyhow, uh, 45 and a quarter hours. Uh, we put a half hour into mechanical, just some, some work in that clearance hole for the steer cable. So that brings us up to 38 and a half in mechanical. Um, nine and a quarter hours in epoxy coating. So that brings us up to 73 hours in epoxy coating. And varnish, we have a new category down here, varnish. 35 and a half hours in varnish. Um, of that 35 and a half, 30 of that, I would say, 29 and a half to 30 hours was in sanding, hand sanding. It takes about an hour or so, 45 minutes to an hour, to roll and tip the varnish on each half of the floor planks. So all the rest of that time was in hand sanding the planks. And again, hand sanding because... I was deathly afraid of burning through with my random orbital. And I, I, the coating of varnish is so thin per layer, it would have been really, really easy to burn through it with an RO. So I just opted to do it by hand. So 30 hours this month in sanding alone. Ibuprofen has been my friend. So we went up $222.72. Um, some of that was on sanding material some of it was on um, rollers and paint trays some of it was on uh, the hook and loop i bought the the sticky backed hook and loop to attach my door panels um, so i have that here i also ordered a spool of 035 stainless wire for my mig so i can start building my cut water some of the cost was in that uh, the varnish again was very expensive 46 dollars a quart for the varnish uh, but anyhow, $222.72, so $222.72 brings us up to $8,455.72 invested. And our 45 and a quarter hours brings us up to 694 and a quarter hours into the zip. So we just about crested 700. Um, one particular zip builder, Chris Atwood, who built, again, a beautiful, beautiful zip. Uh, his zip took him about 733 hours. There is no way I'm going to be done with my zip in 36 hours or 39 hours. Not going to happen. Um, 
On the other end of the spectrum, there was another zip that was built in about 900 hours. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be quite that high. If I were to guess completion-wise, probably around eight, eight and a quarter, something like that. It's just a rough guess, of course. Every time I put a number out there, I always seem to, uh, to miss it. But anyhow, 694 and a quarter hours into the zip this month. So let's, uh, let's see where we're at. So before I forget, I told you I'd give you a little shot of the varnish that I'm using on these floor planks. And this is it. It is Pettit brand, um, Z-Spar. 1015 captain's varnish uh, and I'm using it straight out of the can I'm not thinning it I'm not doing anything strange to it I'm just running it through a uh, a strainer filter right out of the can into my rolling tray and apply it so that's it there um, very expensive in my opinion worth every penny the results are unbelievable uh, for somebody like me that's that's not a varnisher, never done varnish, not a professional by any means. I am an extreme amateur varnisher. Um, this stuff, <laughs> it makes me look better than I am. So that's it, Pettit Captain's 1015. They also have another version that's called Flagship that is 2015, I believe. From what I've heard, and again, I, I don't have any personal experience, but it's not quite as high a gloss, it's still glossy, but it's not as hard of a surface. This stuff has uh, excellent reviews and, and a pretty good history of being um, scrap, scratch resistant, uh, very long gloss retention. You know, years down the road, it's still glossy. So that's why I went with this. Not to mention, it has, uh, see that right there at the bottom? Extra UV protection, easy to apply. Well, it is, it's easy to apply. So that's it. Captain's 1015, worth every penny. Um, if it were more per quart, I'd probably buy it after using it. So we've got all the floor planks set up here. And you can see this is the third coat. And they're they're just like like mirrors. I mean it's it's impressive stuff. And again, this is this is dry. This is completely dry. It's not wet. It's not I mean this is this is how they look. Beautiful. So I was really hoping to have all the interior done this month, but I just ran out of month. Um, I can't hardly be disappointed with the amount of hours I put in this month, so I didn't get it done, but I'll just continue on. So um, June, we'll get the carlings, the dashboard, um, this carling over here, and I'll start from the top. I'll work from the top down. So I'll do the two carlings and the dashboard and the front cockpit. Not going to worry about the seat back because it's hidden. A UV will not shine on it. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. Also, you won't see it. And back here, this carling, the carling towards me, and the rear cockpit dash, they'll get three coats. And I'll do those pieces first. Then I will move down and I'll probably do my frame sections over there, one back here, two on my side. Then I'll probably do three coats on them next. Then I'll go ahead and sand the armrests and do three coats on them. And then finally I'll do the bottom halves of the frames here and stuff like that. But I'll, I'll progressively work my way from the top down so all the sanding dust is falling not on beautiful varnish but on epoxy. So with any luck, within a few weeks, all of the interior of the boat will be just as high gloss as all my floor planks. So I'm pretty excited about that. And at that point, once everything's varnished, all of the raw stuff that's going to be exposed to UV in here, we're going to start decking it. And I'm really hoping to start my decking. It'd be nice by the end of June to have all of the sub-deck done, ready to start doing my mahogany veneers. Maybe even we'll get started on that. Of course, I don't want to set any, <laughs> I don't want to set any video expectations because it seems like I miss them every time I try to take a guess, but... My goal is to at least have the sub deck done by the end of uh, June. Making good progress. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, rate, and comment. And we'll catch you on the next update of Building the Zip.